When it comes to motor simulation games on the Nintendo Switch, the two-wheeled variety definitely lead the way. Your best hope, if you prefer your simulators with four wheels right now, is probably the very decent V-Rally 4, but other than that, it's the bikes that rule the roost. We have the excellent Isle of Man TT, the much improved Monster Energy Supercross 2, and even the original MotoGP 18 on the Switch was a good first attempt to port a fully fledged racing sim by the developer's milestone. A year on and the same development team are bringing us MotoGP 19. Now can this game take first place amongst a pack of decent bike sims? Well, let's find out in my review of MotoGP 19 on the Nintendo Switch. Remember, if you like this review, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button below, and as always, leave me your brilliant comments. Always like replying to those. Now then, I'm a big racing fan, and whilst I'll pretty much play anything in the genre, my passion is sim games, and it started way back on the BBC Micro at school, where I'd sneak games of Jeff Cremon's revs when I should have been doing schoolwork. But it was his Amiga follow-up, the Grand Prix series of games that really lit my fire, and since then, if it has an engine, I've probably driven it in a video game. I've never been much of a bike fan though. I'll catch the odd MotoGP race on the TV if I stumble across it, but it's not something I'd really go out of my way to watch like I would an F1 race or an IndyCar race. Similarly, bike racing games are those sort of games I would really want to try and like. I'd pick them up on a whim over the years, get frustrated really quickly due to their nuanced controls and move on to something else. So getting the chance to review MotoGP 19 was a bit of a double-edged sword. It was a racing sim which I love, but also a bike game which I struggled with historically. For reference, I did buy MotoGP 18 last year, and as I mentioned earlier, despite its detractors, of which there were many, I found plenty of hours of fun gameplay. Handheld it looked pretty awful, full of blurry textures and compromised frame rates. I used my Switch mostly dot though, where it was improved somewhat and was very playable, although I can see why fans had their complaints. My first port of call then when booting MotoGP 19 was to dive headfirst into a quick race mode on handheld to see if Milestone had managed to squeeze any more performance into this updated version and I was instantly impressed. I could actually make out details on my riders leathers and bike and the track texture was bright and detailed rather than being a long black tarmac stretching off into the distance. Draw detail was visibly improved and most important of all frame rate was seemingly locked in at 30 frames a second which Whilst not ideal and 60 frames would have been preferred in racing games, we have to be realistic and I'll take a stable lock frame rate any day if it means the Switch gets a port. It should also be noted that the other console versions are also 30 frames a second. So, so far, so impressed. The next thing to strike me was presentation and load times. Load times are much reduced and getting in and out of a race now, whilst not taking a couple of seconds, is only a short load away. MotoGP 19 also allows you to choose from a variety of modes, the main mode being a pretty extensive career mode across all 19 official tracks of the MotoGP season. During the season you'll be able to take part in testing sessions during free practice and completing requested tasks such as putting in 5 consistent laps at a race pace which will earn you development points which can in turn be spent to upgrade your bike as the season goes on. It's a similar system to the most recent F1 game by Codemasters and a welcome addition that really adds some interest to usually mundane practice runs. Once on the track, there's some good and some bad news, but generally it's mostly good. The plentiful cutscenes are now more fluid at that locked frame rate, but overall textures across the board, to be honest, are some of the worst I've seen in a Switch game. The resolution of the logos on levers, for example, Whilst better than MotoGP 18 are still pixelated and blurry, it's such a shame and it can spoil these otherwise atmospheric scene setting moments. As the camera follows your rider or pans across the great looking track areas, you have some really nice situational and track specific commentary. It really feels like a lot of effort has been made in the presentation during these moments, but I just wish we could get that graphical quality up a little bit. When out on your bike though, the graphical issues tend to be less noticeable because you're either focusing so hard on just staying upright and not caring about if you can read a tiny logo on the rider's backside, but also just generally graphics feel a bit sharper, particularly, as I mentioned earlier, in docked mode. Whilst not the best the Switch has to offer at times, they certainly do the job, and you can at least get the feeling you are watching a MotoGP race unfold. Controlling these rocket-powered two-wheelers is still an almighty challenge. 
and although the slew of assists are available, helping you out with everything from braking and keeping the bike's front wheel on the ground, to a welcome slider for the AI level of your opponents. With some practice, it's definitely possible to tailor the game to keep up with your improving skill levels and produce some really exciting and competitive racing. Thankfully this year, you can also map the acceleration and braking to the right analog stick, which goes some way to mitigating the switch's lack of analog triggers. It's not ideal of course, but for those that want fine grain control with some practice, you'll be well catered for. Now I'm not going to pretend I have any idea how a real bike controls, as I've never ridden one, and to be honest, the thought terrifies me. But I will say the representation in the game is fun for me as a casual fan, and with a good sense of speed and high requirement on skill and practice to be even able to put laps in where you don't fall off, let alone being competitive. There is going to be a lot of gameplay hours here if you're willing to sink the time in. A big back of the box feature was the new neural AI system, which is supposedly able to learn and adapt to your style to keep itself competitive. Now whether this actually made it to the Switch version or not, I'm not certain, but what I will say is racing in and around a pack of other bikes feels excellent with them being aggressive to cover their racing line if ahead of you and doing all they can to realistically nip past you if behind. I've also seen multiple mistakes from the AI, including some pretty big spills off of the track, which is also excellent to see in a racing game, knowing the AI isn't just following a set path. Beyond the career mode, MotoGP 19 now has the welcome addition of an historic mode, allowing you to drop in on certain pivotal moments in MotoGP history, and this mode also brings with it three additional classic tracks, including the legendary American track Laguna Seca, which is a personal favourite of mine with its famous wicked corkscrew bend. The final mode worth noting was added shortly after launch in a patch, and that is the Moto E category of bikes. These new electric powered bikes are available in one off races or in the official Moto E Championship mode, which consists of six races. Far from being a reskin of existing bikes, these whisper quiet yet powerful machines are great fun to ride with their own set of nuanced controls. I have a separate video showcasing this mode which I'll link to above and in the description below if you want to check that out. Now mode wise it isn't all good news I'm afraid as the Nintendo Switch version features no online mode for multiplayer racing. There is a local network mode but realistically who's going to use that? It's a shame it's missing but these niche racing games barely see anyone online anyways but it would have been nice to at least have the option. Ok so on to my verdict and that is that MotoGP19 is a step up from its predecessor and that's all you can really ask for in an ongoing game series. It both improves on the old features whilst adding in more content, though the removal of multiplayer is disappointing but also understandable to a degree. The niggle for me with the missing multiplayer mode is that the price point not really being fair compared to the other console versions which do include it. I get the reasons for the higher price on the Switch which is due to the retail cartridge media costs being higher to produce, yet it still feels that Switch owners are being had over a little bit with such a major feature being removed. If multiplayer isn't a big issue for you to overcome, then there is a heck of a lot to like here. Even in handheld, this is one mean racing game with a lengthy career mode and plenty of other content to give you a quick bike fix when you need it. I really love the Moto e-bikes and was so happy to see them added in by Milestone after initially launching without them. It's not the prettiest game at times, but I'll always pick frame rate overlooks every time, especially for Switch games. It's a game that's kept me absolutely engrossed as a sim racing fan and I can't wait to carry on playing long after I finish this review. Now just before I get to scoring I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this review. Please consider subscribing below, hit the like button and leave me a comment. I would love to know what you think of this missing multiplayer mode and should it have resulted in a lower cost for the Switch version. Hmm, what do you think? Ok, MotoGP19 is a hard game to score. On one hand, it's quite a downgrade visually from its PS4 and Xbox counterparts, but at the same time it runs really well on Switch and, well, I'm going to kind of spoil the score here, but it's the best bike racing game on the Switch, so what score should it deserve? At the end of the day, I only own a Switch now to ensure I give the platform 100% focus and also to put myself in a position of people that can't maybe afford multiple platforms. So with that said, assuming the Switch is the only platform you have access to this game on, 
and I'm going to give MotoGP 19 on the Nintendo Switch an excellent 8.5 out of 10. It's rough, it's ready, and it's racy.